Hi there, and welcome to another edition of our video feedback reports. We're obviously covering the month of June. Um, and once again, as we said only a few weeks ago, this amazing run of specimen tench has continued in our waters. We're now up to five uh, of the uh, six main Redland District gravel pits have produced double figure tench, and we'll flash up some pictures of uh, some wonderful doubles that Michael Nunn caught from our Motlands water. So yeah, the tench bonanza continues. And of course, being June, the rivers are open. So we've got some uh, good reports uh, back from the Kennet. It was a slow start, but it's starting to produce its gems and uh, some really good feedback from our members from uh, our new shared water at, uh, on the Thames at, at South Stoke. So lots to tell you about. Plus we've got all our usual news and features. So we'll get on with it. Whitedale, fisheries report then. So tell us about the hatchery. You've been bombarding us on uh, Facebook yeah. with pictures of baby fish. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a dad, apparently. Mm. <laughs> but, uh, again. Um, yeah, well, hatchery. It's been a bit of a hectic month as far as that's concerned. And I must admit, I uh, I don't think when, I, when the whole idea was floating around in my head two and a half years ago... I, I didn't quite realise how much work was involved, but uh, we're, we're, we're in it. Um, I mean, the really good thing is I can rely on Jim um, to sort of do some of the, you know, like the streaming and things like that. We've got a few people to help us out. Eddie, in particular, needs a, needs a big mention. Eddie Hampton, that is, yeah. That's, that's it, um, for helping Jim out. And because we've got these guys and Jim to fall back on, it's allowed me to sort of dedicate most of my time this month to the hatchery. And... Uh, yeah, we've done better than expected. Um, so what have you got swimming around in there at the moment? Well, then? I mean, it's really difficult to try and count um, fish that are sort of 15, 20 centimetres. Um, millimetres. Millimetres, <laughs> centimetres, go on, Bennett. Um, millimetres long, but uh, best guesses, we've got in the region of 10 to 12,000 chub and around about 1,000 barbel. Um, it appears that we missed the, the lion's share of the spawning with the barbel, um, and we only have actually managed to get one female with a small amount of um, spawn in her. Um, so to get anything was was quite good, quite well, fortunate. Let, let, let's put up a picture now of uh, the EA fisheries team, because, I mean, you know, the EA comes in for a bit of criticism, and often rightly so. <laughs> yeah. But they actually pulled out the stops oh, and they turned out for yeah, us, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, I mean, we, we, I think we had, I'm fairly sure it was a Thursday um, that, that we actually went out and got them and there wasn't a fisheries officer in the whole of southern England that wasn't with us on that day. So um, I apologies for anyone that needed them on that Thursday, but I had them all. Um, and yeah, they pulled out all the stops and, and uh, helped us out no end. What was really good with having the EA guys is they know the difference between a male and a female. So when they were out doing the electro fishing, they could actually almost grade Mm -hmm. the fish on the boat, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, so we didn't put any fish through undue stress by getting them back and sorting them out then. So yeah, it was really good. It worked really well. Um, there are some things we'll do differently and um, we will have a wash up meeting with the EA um, prior to next year um, because it wasn't perfect. It's, it's the first time they've done it for this purpose, mm -hmm. let alone us, you know. Well, there isn't another angry club in the country that's tried to do a river-based coarse fish hatchery. I mean, no. so, so we're all learning, aren't we? Oh, yeah, yeah, massively. And I, I mean, I, I've actually learned that much this month. I've actually started a spreadsheet. <laughs> because the trouble is, I, I, I'd love to do it all again next week. Because if I could do it all again next week, we would treble, quite easily treble what we've produced. Um because we've made mistakes along along the way. Yeah, but uh, mate, I mean, this is not a bad start. You know, for year one, we're going to have 10,000 chub, we're going to have 1,000 barbel, 30% uh, of them you're going to grow on, the rest are going to be released in swimming fr swimming fry. So when's the big day? When are we going to have the, well, the, the first release? Uh, well, I'm hoping, I mean, we've got the open day. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, we've, we, we've way, got please. a lot of balls up in the air at the moment. Um, so we're going to get the, the open day out of the way. So, and I need a holiday um so i want a week off so as far as i'm concerned as quicker they can get out the better um so we're going to be looking at the end of july last week of july after the open day 
we'll, um, I mean, there'll be a lot of pomp and ceremony and this, that and the other, um, and we'll we'll start putting some fish oh, out. That's fantastic. Well, look, well, done, well done, mate. It's, it's been, been fabulous. Let's just rattle on through some of the other bits and pieces we've had. Now, you had the royalty of carp fishing for the Angling yes. Trust fundraiser at Junction 12. So who did you, who did you have down there? We had Oz Holness, um, Tom Stokes, Nick Hellier, and Terry Hearn. Hearn. Yeah, Terry Hearn. Hearn. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I understand Junction 12 fished remarkably well. What, it what did, did the guys did. catch? After a really slow start, because it has been slow, because you know over the winter, a lot, a lot of lakes in this area, um, it suffered massively with floods. I mean, the first month, six weeks of bookings that we take over the weekends, we had to cancel, because it was, and I was really sweating that it was going to spill over into that, into mm. the angling trust thing. Um, but fortunately, everything, sort of the planets aligned and we managed to sort of get everybody there and it fished really well, really well. I mean, there was over 20 fish caught between um, the, the sort of four pairs, if you like, um, including two 40 pounders, two 30 pounders and a lot of sort of big 20s and this and the other it fished really well um it hasn't done so much since <laughs> but um unfortunately but then you know look you know without sort of casting aspersions on anybody you know you've got some of the country's best carp anglers there and if they can't wheedle out a fish or two nobody well, can exactly and then talking about the country's best anglers you hosted world champion will raisin down here at Wilmot. Yes. how did that come about uh, well yeah i mean that was a last minute thing um I, I was actually really quite privileged you know bear in mind that will raisin you know has, has probably got the grandfather of all carp puddles, if you like, with Gold Valley. Um, he wanted to come to our humble um, Wilmots and, 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 and have a go. They were promoting a, a, a poll, a new poll that Daiwa have released. And it was literally a, a phone call the day before, can we come over, da 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 And of course, you know, we, we said yes. And I, I've got to say, um, I've been a fisherman since I've been, oh, five years old and I stood and watched Will Raisin for 15 minutes and I've never ever seen anybody and I include salmon anglers, carp anglers, barbel anglers, every, I've never ever seen an angler fish in that way. It, it, it was absolutely incredible. What, precise or, or technically yeah, perfect? Or it, was, it was just just the whole way he done. He went about things. And, you know, in hindsight, we're all really clever. You know, oh, what, I should have thought of that. I should have thought of that. And, you know, but he's got all that to a T. And, and it, was, it was just, it was like a machine. He was just like a machine. And, I mean, he caught eight fish in the 15 minutes that I stood there and watched him. And, you know, we got some good anglers in our club, yeah. but not, um, that, not that level. <laughs> no, I mean, it was just absolutely incredible. And what, what did he think of Will was? He loved it. Absolutely loved it. He, he so much so that he's actually sort of, um, he approached me at the end and said, you know, he'd love to do some winter league stuff on there. Um, what better endorsement than that? You know, he's ex-world champion, European champion. Um, I think they're out somewhere at the moment um, mm -hmm. in some sort of European champion. I'm sure he's up the top of the leaderboard, you know. And and if if somebody of that calibre comes and has a look at our, our humble little water and, and goes away with a smile on his face, then, you know, we've done something right. Thanks very much for that, Del. Um, let's just come on to a few other announcements. Uh, we mentioned last month uh, our new shared water at Ch uh, Chelsea and South Stoke that we got with the London Anglers Association. Uh, proving very, very popular with the members. Some lovely bags of, of roach, bream and chub coming out. And, and of course, it'll fish even better in the winter on the right day. Uh, but please do bear in mind, it's a shared water. Uh, check the website, check the Facebook page. There will be the occasional booking on there where LAA have got one of their member clubs yeah. on there. But most of the time, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be fishing uh, uh, available to Redmond District members. Uh, I understand there's been quite a few people using the civil service exchange yeah. ticket, which they can yeah. get on 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 Clubmate. So yeah. it'd be great to get some feedback on that, Dale. Yeah, yeah, we haven't had too much feedback on that, I, other than people saying that they've been up there. You know, um, it would be some 
it would be useful for both us and civil service, to be fair, um, if people could sort of tell us what they've caught, what they think of the venue, da 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 Yeah. I mean, just a note on the um, checking the, the website for the South Stoke stuff, that, that is applicable for all of our waters. We're into match fishing season now, um, and there's nothing that cheeses a match angler off more than anything than turning up on a book venue to find that there's anglers on there and you could end up in some hot water because it is part of our rules that you are not allowed to be there. So check. So for Redland District Waters, check the match fixture calendar. Uh, um, and But for shared waters, or um, then obviously go to the venue page because uh, there won't be Redland District matches on those venues. So let's move on to the Open Day. You mentioned it earlier. Uh, um, the April the, uh, sorry, April, what am I talking about? July the, uh, the 20th, so it's only uh, not very far two now. Weeks. Yeah, two yeah, weeks. Yeah, two, two weeks. Two weeks away. Um, really pleased to announce that uh, we're going to have more activities in the uh, in the marquee. Lawrence Hanger, the guy behind these amazing fish flicks videos with Marcy yeah. Bowler and uh, does a load of work for Drennan and Gardner with Alan Stagg. He's going to come along and do uh, a, a fishing photography workshop mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, in the marquee, which is great. And we're also going to have rig clinics. So from some of the country's best anglers, uh, an opportunity to learn about their secrets, some of the little tweaks they do. Yeah, that's it. It's so all we, in the detail. Yeah, absolutely. Sort of so we've got Oz doing, Oz Holness doing carp and Alan Stagg doing some of the rigs for a special intention, Chubb and Barber. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, hopefully that'll be popular, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah it will be. And, and like I say, it's all in the detail. And while your rig may look the same, there'll be something slightly different. And that's why they catch more fish than you do. So come along and pick their brains. Well, a very, very wise angler once told me, he said, there's no silver bullets in uh, becoming an, uh, an expert fisherman, but it's the 5%. But if yep. you have enough 5%, yep. they make a difference. Exactly that. Exactly uh, so that. there you go. So yeah, do come along and uh, hopefully that's uh, going to be uh, a, a, pop, a, a popular addition to the programme. Yeah. All the usual uh, stalls are going to be there. Uh, the venue opens at, uh, at 10 o'clock on Saturday, July the 20th. So really uh really hope for a good turnout lots of support from our members and we will be raising money obviously for the kennett hatchery fund yeah and hopefully a bit of sunshine this year sunshine as opposed nice. to gales and rain last year so, so. venue closure yes um venue closure because we're a little bit bigger this year um and we're going to be utilizing a little bit more parking from elsewhere on on the sort of complex what we're going to do is the causeway are between Flint and Engerfield is going to be closed at nine o'clock on the Friday before. Right. Um, so the nineteenth. So everyone needs to be away by the night by nine o'clock on the nineteenth. We're also going to be closing Engerfield from the Flint car park all the way up to the Pingewood Gate. Um, same same applies nine o'clock on the 19th you can come back again on the six six o'clock on the 20th because we'll all be done and dusted by then um if you're really desperate and you want to you want to be fishing engerfield the thing to do is to fish and people will know these swims um they can fish up by the reeds they can fish up the top south so lane end um but nothing that is accessible from the, the Cottage Lane car park, Flint. And the Flint, Flint itself is completely shut? Yeah, well, Flint, Flint is closed on the causeway and all the way around by the pads, the slab, all that sort of stuff. Top end, Sales Farm Lane end, and, and the, the Blue, Pool, Blue Pool Bank, yeah. that's fine. They can fish along there and we'll keep that open. But anywhere else, it will be closed and people will be asked to leave um, if they're still here. And it will not go down very favourably if we have to ask people to leave. Okay, so there's gonna be an email going out to everybody uh, through Clubmate, and we'll be posting all of this on our Facebook page as well. But, you know, please take note of what Dale said about the venue closure, because we want our open day to be successful, and we don't wanna be having to move people off. Mm. Right, a couple of other things. Uh, the Better Fishing Academy program rocks on. The next uh, fishing clinic is a Silvers clinic, catching uh, on the pole and on the waggler. Uh, Farnham Flint and Brownlee, we've got some of our uh, uh, top float anglers there. That's July the 27th, uh, pop the poster up here. Um, and there are still still places mm. that people can book on. Um, mm. So if uh, people are interested in improving their 
um, their float fishing skills uh, opportunity on July the 27th to, to do that. And lastly, your species hunt yes, competition, Dale. Yes, you you species, launched that last month. Has there uh, been yes, any interest? Uh, yeah, there's been a little bit of interest. Um, I mean, I'll be perfectly honest, I'm a, I'm a little bit disappointed. Um, I think there's only sort of three people that have actually sort of posted up stuff that they've caught. Um, yet we've got I think it's about 100 people on the actual page. Now, I can't believe that they haven't been out and caught stuff. So well, They probably uh, haven't caught a sander yet. Uh, well, why. possibly not. Um, so, you know, it's a decent price. You've got a 500 quid permit and, you know, some bits and pieces from, from Gardner. It's well worth getting in and getting... And I'd be very surprised if someone or more than one or two people get the whole list of species oh, so it is, it's winnable <laughs> it is winnable um so you know get on there and, and and get get going you know so um that's just a shame i can't win the prizes because i'd love to have them. you haven't got time you yeah. haven't got time <laughs> no that's true well i'll tell you what we'll do we'll give it when we do the member mail out for the open day we'll give it a bit of a plug there as well so yeah. everybody gets some, yeah, uh, some it, information yeah. well thanks for that Dell. that's great let's roll a gallery and look at the fishing pictures for the month Okay, that was quite a, a, a mixed bag there. Um, yeah. As I said, as I said earlier, you know, the Kennet is just starting to throw up some of its better fish and some yeah. some cracking barbel. I know it's been hard work for the barbel yeah. anglers, but yeah, yeah. I mean, the Kennet. Uh, it's a slice. Start, I, yeah, I mean, every, every year is exactly the same. Everyone's really keen, and I totally understand. You know, all of that. They want to get out. It's been three months, but they haven't been able to get on the river. But the Kennet does not start well. It never has done. Um, Personally, I wouldn't even look at the Kennet till August. Um, but, you know, they, they're out there, they're doing it, the fish are there. Well, let's give a shout. I mean, some beautiful barbel, but let's just give a little shout to Dave Elliott, because Dave's not been well. Uh, and opening night, he posts this picture of, I don't know, he doesn't say how big it is, but it's a corker, isn't it? Oh, and, yeah. You know, fair play yeah, to that's, Dave. That's a, that's a good fish. Yeah. That's a, that's a good fish. I would say that's up sort of 13 pound at least. Yeah. He's, he, he, he's done well. And, you know, uh, lovely to see people even going on the river early for the chub. Mike Ellis there with a personal best chub yeah, of, yeah. of 612. I'll tell you what, for the time of year, there are some big chub about at the moment. Do you know, I was thinking that. I mean, 612 at, in June, what yeah. the hell is that thing going to be like? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that, that's got to be seven and a half pounds yeah. easy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, when, when, when we were collecting the brood stock, um, we picked, or should I say the EA picked up a fish of £7.12, um, and that was on the 6th of June. Now that fish did was carrying a bit of spawn, 
but it wasn't carrying a lot. Um, so that fish, once we'd stripped it, would have probably weighed, still weighed 6'10", 6'12", something like that. Mm. Now, that fish is, is going to be a very high 7 pounder in the winter. Yeah, um, I think so. So, you know, it's not, the Thames hasn't got exclusive rights on 8 pound shirt. No, no, not at all. No, there's, no, there's, no, definitely no. Some, there's definitely some in the Kennet. A few big ones in the Kennet. Right, well, you're... It falls to you to pick the fishing picture of the yeah. month. So which one have you gone well, for? Well, I, 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 there's a number of pictures, to be fair, and it, it's quite tricky this month. Um, but the picture we've chosen is Tony Graham with a mirror carp. Now, I'm not 100% sure, because I know he flits between lakes, but it's one of the South Permit lakes. It, but if you just look at the, the, the shine that that fish has got, it looks like a bit of a wood carving. It just looks it's beautiful, lovely. beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, and he's got a bit of flowerage in the background and what have you. He's not smiling, but uh, well, you never we'll, do. Forg we'll forgive him for that. That's great. You've invented a new word, that, flowerage. Flowerage. Yeah, well yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so well done to that, and congratulations to uh, Tony. What has he got to do is cl uh, claim his yeah, prize? Yeah, just give us, drop us a message, and you get the choice out of some, I'm pretty sure you'll choose the carp stuff, but you can have some carp stuff, or you can have some coarse fishing stuff. Um, courtesy of Rod Atchison and Bait Tech, um, just drop us a message and of course you get a hat as well, which is the most important thing. Okay, thanks for that, Dell. Right, my turn now. Fish of the month. Well, no uh, uh, yeah. prizes. Uh, from that's, it. that's almost as foregone as the, the election. Well, we, well, well thank you. Uh, um, uh, probably even more significant uh, than a landslide. Um, we mentioned it last month because uh, he called it uh, he called it in time for our last video. But yeah. uh, Grant Lewis, um, this is going to be right up there with a contender for a, as a contender for the fish of the year and oh, the fish of yeah. the month. Yeah. This is an eleven six tench caught on the float from Englefield. Beautiful picture, wonderful capture, incredibly rare. Um, certainly to catch them on the float from oh, those big I, I would I would argue that that could possibly be one of the biggest in the country this year caught on a float. Absolutely. I mean, you know, there's a few of us had some big tench out the Red and Waters, but I've never had anything like that on the float. No, you know? no. Um, so well done, Grant. Uh, get in touch. There's a 50 quid Angling Trust, uh, Angling Trust, Angling Direct <laughs> uh, voucher uh, for you, plus a nice little trophy. So get in touch with me and we'll do the compulsory handover and, and handshake. Congratulations, you will go into the hat to be voted upon uh, for the Fish of the Year at the, uh, at the end of the calendar year. And I suspect that's going to be a very, very strong contender. Uh, very, very. And he's smiling, which is great. Only why wouldn't you? <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for that, Dale. Um, and I think it's probably time we moved on to hearing from young Jim on what he thinks the fishing prospects are going to be for the month of July. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Well, he often gets it right. Often. Right, Jim, fishing prospects uh, for July. Yep, yeah, well, it's been a bit of hot weather the last few weeks, so I don't think that's quite helped with some of this sort of start of the river season. Um, a few of these sort of bright days, I, I love going down to the river and it's a nice dark overcast day and you can sort of consistently catch through the day. But I think this bright weather at the moment just really hasn't helped. So for the guys going sort of late on in the evenings, just as it's cooling off, that's the time to be getting out there and fishing the rivers, I think, at the moment. Um, as Del said, you know, the Kennet's always a slow starter. I mean, do you expect the barbel, barbel fishing to improve as the month goes on? Oh yeah, definitely. As, as the month goes on, it's going to be improving everywhere, the barbel, the chub and things like that. Uh, I think with this sort of funny spring we've had, all these fish are a bit confused at the minute with their spawning times and things like that. So after this sort of month, everything will start to settle down and hopefully we'll get a nice bit of cooler weather and they'll be really on the feed then. So t tell me about the lakes, because obviously the weed's starting to go up in Flint and Pinge and uh, and, uh, and Englefield. Mm -hmm. My experience is once you get that, that weed cover, you get a lot more fish activity closer in, don't yeah, you? Yeah, certainly, yeah. Um, in the last couple of weeks, sort of walking around um, Junction 12, I've started to see the carp really in the edges now and like sort of creating new spots in the edges that weren't there last year. So they're really getting in the margins now and having a mooch. Um, for the guys tench fishing on the, the big gravel pits, Now's your time, now this weed's up in the edge, get down the evening before, rake yourself a little spot and these fish are going to be passing literally feet off the margins now. On these big gravel pits you see so many people, they sort of chucking it out as far as they can to the middle, 
when the main feature on the lake is the margin around your feet. So don't neglect the margins this time of year. I, th I think I think that's really good advice. And of course, you know, the Thames is uh, you know coming into a bit of form, and yep. uh, we we look forward to getting reports from people. Mm. Um, but on sort of general silverfish fishing. July is usually the month that the rud on flint start to turn on, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I think they already have actually, in, in, especially in a couple of areas. I, I know some tench guys that have been sort of come over here this spring for a bit of um, sort of tench fishing, and they're literally plopping out a feeder, and before the feeders hit the bottom, they've got a rud on the end, and they're actually can real nice stamp fish, a couple sort of sort eight ounces or so. So if you were on a waggler having some good fun with that, catching eight ounce rud, what more can you? Well, I mean, that's a, that's a good plug for the Silverfish uh, uh, Clinic on the 27th of yeah, uh, July it. as well. Yeah, so, I mean, hopefully the rudder will, uh, will, will play ball for that. Yeah, that's it. They're really on it in some of the big gravel pits. Um, but again, you've got to go find these fish. If you can have a sort of walk in a sort of early afternoon and see some of those fish sort of pimpling out, if you've got a few pints of maggot and keep them pouches going in, they will literally stay in that swim all day and it's a fisher chuck. Well, thanks very much for that, Jim. So the, the advice is basically fish for everything. Yeah? yeah, fish for everything this time of year. They're all out there and they're having a feed. So good well, luck, everyone. Thanks very much, Jim. OK, that's it for this month. I apologise for being a bit slow and woozy. As some of you may remember, uh, there was a general election recently and I've been up all night. But my loyalty to Redland District and to Dell and to Jim means that, you know, we're never going to miss a filming opportunity. So uh, you lot have a great time out there. Uh, enjoy yourselves and tight lines.